Hi, this is the uh, fourth video in the playlist where we've been looking through this um, sample assessment paper from Edexcel and it's aimed towards the higher tier. So this is the last uh, video. Uh, we're going to be looking at three questions which are towards the end of the paper. Um, I don't know how long it's going to take but I suggest that you stop the video as we attempt to have a look at each of the questions, attempt it yourselves and then see if you can check the solution as well. Okay, so we're going to crack on with with um, question 23 and I would um, suggest that if you're not sure about any of these questions also do have a look at the rest of the videos in the playlist because they'll really help you to uh, get to grips with some of the practice for some of this GCSE revision. Okay so we've got to um, show that this particular fraction can be written as that. Now this is where it does get a little bit more tricky so uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to concentrate at the moment on just this denominator so I'm not going to worry too much about the 1 over um, but what I'm going to do is rather than writing 1 I'm going to write root 2 over root 2 um, because if I do that it means then that I can add those two fractions together so 1 is exactly the same as root 2 over root 2 now if I add those two fractions together what I get is along the top I get 1, same as ever, and then along the bottom I've got 1 plus root 2 all divided by root 2, okay? And all I've done here, I could have written root 2 plus 1, but I've just swapped it the other way around just because it looks a little bit better. And then again, I'm going to deal with the bottom where I'm going to um, rationalise the denominator. I'm going to get rid of that root 2 by multiplying through by root 2 times root 2 at the bottom. So I'm not doing anything other than just making it a little bit better for myself. Now if I multiply these two roots together, then I get... Uh, 2, because root 2 times root 2 is root 4, and the square root of 4 is actually 2. So that's okay. So I've done that, and that's fine. The top, however, I'm going to have um, root 2 times 1 plus root 2. So I better write that out. It's root 2 times 1 plus root 2. Okay, don't forget this is all over 1 at the top, yeah? Okay, so let's just check that as well and make sure that we multiply out these brackets. So it's going to give me root 2 plus root 4. Well, that's the same as saying 2 again. So it's going to give me 1 over root 2 plus 2 because the square root, remember these two terms are going to be multiplied so the square root of 4 is going to be 2, okay? All right, so it's looking a little bit better for me. Um, right, so where we are now is we can start to deal with this uh, numerator at the top here because, remember, this is basically, I could write this if I wanted to as um, 1 divided by root 2 plus 2 over 2 because this this dot here these two dots on this division sign mean put the one there and put that lot into there okay so if I wanted to do that that's perfectly fine and it just makes it a little bit clearer because when you divide a fraction you just simply multiply and flip it the other way around so I can now write that as one times 2 over root 2 plus 2. Okay, I hope that's all right for you, that all I've done is I've taken this and I've flipped it around the other way. And because it's 1 times it, I don't actually have to deal with the 1 at all. I can just ignore it entirely. So what I'd want to do, however, is I want to get rid of this bit at the bottom here, and I'm going to use a, a fairly neat trick. I'm going to use something called the difference of two squares, where what I would do is I'm going to multiply top and bottom by um, root 2 minus 2. So I'm going to write this as 2 over root 2 plus 2, and I'm going to multiply that by root 2 minus 2, root 2 minus 2. Now, the reason I want to do that is because when I multiply these things through, I'm actually going to lose um, this root 2 part of it. You'll see what I mean in a minute just as I expand that through. So let's just have a look at that now as we're doing that. So at the top I've got 2 times root 2. Well that's okay, that's going to be 2 root 2. Okay, And then I've got 2 times minus 2. Well that's going to be minus 4. 
And at the bottom, I'm going to have root 2 times root 2. Well, that's going to be root 4, which is the same as saying 2. And then I'm going to have minus root 2. So I've done that bit. I'm going to have minus root 2. Uh, so minus 2 root 2. And then plus 2 root 2. So you can see what I'm doing now is I'm going to get rid of these two terms. And then I've got plus 2 times minus 2. Well, that's going to be minus 4. So what I've done by doing this, by this, this kind of technique of the difference of two squares, is that I can get rid of this bit at the bottom here. And what I end up with is um, 2 root 2 minus 4 divided by minus 2. All right, so it is looking a little bit better, a little bit healthier. It's not exactly the same as what we're being asked to recreate, but we're kind of working in the right direction now. So what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to separate these two up, because don't forget this divided by this is the same as is also this divided by this as well. So I could write this as two separate fractions, 2 root 2 over minus 2 minus 4 over, uh, beg your pardon, minus 2 as well. Okay, so if I then tidy that up a little bit, I've got this minus 2 and 2 here. Well, I can divide through by 2, uh, beg your pardon, divide through by minus 2, and what I end up with at the top is minus root 2. Okay, with this one here, I've got minus 4 divided by minus 2. I'm sorry that's not particularly clear. It's supposed to be a 2, but minus 4 divided by minus 2, well, that's going to give me plus 2. And actually, you'll see then, that if I just swap these terms around and make it 2 minus root 2, that's the answer to this particular question. So I do appreciate that. That's an awful lot of work. If you can do this kind of thing, then really this is uh, level 6 plus, maybe into sort of level 7. It's a three mark question. There are a couple of other videos in the uh, on the channel that actually deal with these sorts of questions. It might be worthwhile having a look at those. Okay, so let's move on now from here to um, question 24, which is the type of question that um, comes up quite a lot in these sorts of papers where we're looking at, in this particular case, probability. And what we've got is that uh, this guy has got uh, an empty box and for some reason he puts some red counters and some blue counters into the box. Okay, so we've got to work this through. Now, one of the ways that you can do this is think about it like a, a probability tree. Um, and what you've got is red and blue. So it's fairly straightforward that because you've got the ratio of 1 to 4, what it means is, is that 1 out of 5 counters, so there's 5 counters in total, and 1 out of them is a red counter. So for the first, um, the first uh, event, the probability of pulling out a red counter is actually going to be 1 out of 5. Okay, let's look at the probability of pulling out a second red counter. And this is where you've got to be just a little bit cuter about this. Well, we don't know how many counters there are in the box, but we do know that one of them has actually been taken out. So if we put that into a mathematical statement, we're going to say it's going to be x, which is the number of counters that we don't know, taken one away. Okay, now we also know that the amount of counters in the box, while it's also been reduced by one, it was originally five lots of x, okay? This is a very important principle that you need to be able to create this kind of expression to be able to answer these sorts of questions. Um, so let me just go through that again. So there were x counters in the box, one has been taken away, and in this particular case, it was the red one, okay? Uh, we don't know how many there are, but we know there's one less red. There were five lots of counters in the box because originally there was five, five lots of counters in the box. And again, we took one away from it. OK, so let's put that together. And what we're saying is, is that with probabilities, you need to multiply along the branches. So we've got one fifth multiplied by x minus one 
divided by x, 5x minus 1, and that equals 6 over 155. Okay, it looks horrendous for the moment. Okay, it's a really horrible type of statement to make, but we should be able to kind of use this and be able to work through and give us an indication of how many um, red counters John put in the box in the first place. Okay, so let's just multiply this out, and I'm going to get x minus 1 at the top because 1 times x minus 1 is still x minus 1. And at the bottom, I'm going to get 5 times 5x, which is 25x. And then 5 times minus 1 is minus 5. And that equals 6 over 155. OK, looking a little bit better. And what I'm going to do now is cross multiply. Now, just for the sake of the video, I'm just going to um, explain what I'm doing. I'm going to cross multiply across here. So if I do that, um, it's fairly easy. That 155 multiplied by x minus 1, what I'm going to end up with, is 155x minus 155. Okay, so that's this little bit taken care of. Okay, this bit here, I'm multiplying these two terms by 6. So if I multiply 6 by 25, I get 150. So that equals 150x. And 6 times minus 5 is minus 30. OK, so it's now going to give me the ability to swap this around and find out the value of x. So if I bring that 150x over here, I end up with just 5x, which is good. And then on the other side, I've got this minus 155. I'm going to take it over here and add it to minus 130. If I do that, I end up with 125. OK, and then it's a case of just dividing through by 5 and I get x equals 25 counters. And therefore, uh, John must have put or must have had 25 counters, red counters in the box when he started. OK, so I appreciate that's taken quite a bit of work. The hardest thing, I think, with this is establishing this. So I suggest you have a look at maybe some similar questions, see if you can practice these a little bit. But if you're not sure about it, don't worry too much. These are very, very high level questions. So if you're finding these difficult, um, you know, even if you're working at a very high level, they are quite challenging. So just take your time, work your way through them and uh, if you can, find a way of practicing them. I have seen these questions on other exam papers in a very similar way. OK, so we're coming now to the very final question in the exam, which is... Hi, so we're on to question 25. Now, just for the sake of the video, I've just taken the liberty of um, writing out quite a lot of the solution because there's quite a lot to go through and I'm very aware that uh, time is marching on a little bit. OK, so on this particular um, question, it's always good practice just to do a quick sketch first and just write in the value of the coordinate. So A is minus 2, 1, B is 6, 5 and C is 4, K. OK, now, um, when you've got that, the easiest thing to do, really, although we're being asked to work out the gradient of AC, um, in order to do that, we need to just back a little bit and uh, just make sure that we've got a few bits of information in place. So in order to work out the value of AC, what we need to do is work out this value of K. So everything I'm going to do is to lead to this point of getting this value of, of 9, which it will be. So the first thing I'm going to do is look at AB. Um, the reason I'm going to do that is because BC is perpendicular, it's 90 degrees, which means it's the negative reciprocal. OK, so let's have a look at AB. Well, AB, the gradient is difference in Y over difference in X. So if I look at that, I've got the difference between 5 and 1, which is 4, and the difference between 6 and minus 2, which is 8. So I'm then 4 over 8, which equals a half, which means that BC is, must be minus 2. It's the negative reciprocal on a perpendicular gradient. OK, what's that tell us? Well, the good thing about that is that we know that gradient is difference in y over difference in x, and that equals minus 2. So that's going to allow us to plug some information in to be able to work out the value of k. And what we end up with is the value of k is 9, and you can follow that through for yourself. OK, good. So now we're in a position where we know this c 
is the coordinate for 9. So we've now got everything we need to be able to work out the equation of this line. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work out the gradient, which again, difference in y over difference in x, and that's going to give me 4 over 3. Okay, and again, you can follow that through. Difference in y is the difference between 9 and 1, which is 8. And difference in x is the difference between 4 and minus 2, which is 6. So that reduces down to 4 over 3. Now, if I plug this into the standard format for a straight line, it allows me then to plug in the value of 9 for y, 4 over 3 for the gradient and the value of x is 4. I'm using this, this point here. Okay, So it then will allow me to calculate through and get the value of c. And what I end up with is because I've got 9 equals and I want to take away 16 over 3, what I'm going to do is change that to 27 over 3 because to take fractions away from each other you have to make sure they've got the same denominator. So what I end up with is 27 over 3 minus 16 over 3 equals C. So that works out that C is 11 over 3. Okay. If I now put that together into one um, equation, I get, again, my standard form y equals 4 over 3x plus 11 over 3. Um, now, it's just a little bit easier for me to multiply through by 3. So I'm going to get rid of these denominators here. And if I multiply the whole expression through by 3, I get 3y equals 4x plus 11 and then I need to put that in the form that they've asked me to where I've got c after the equals sign so I'm just going to bring that 4x over and I get 3y minus 4x equals 11 and that's the answer to my particular question. So there is quite a lot going on with this particular uh, question. In the interest of completing the whole paper I thought I would include it on the video but I do appreciate there's quite a lot going on there. So um, you might want to rewind the video and have a look at it as it works through but hopefully you'll get a very similar answer um, and I will try to find a way of posting some videos which are very similar to this to give you a little bit more practice. Um, I hope that's been useful for you. Please do add a comment below if you're not sure about anything. I'll always come back to you. Um, please do subscribe to the site and I'll look forward to seeing you inside the next video.